Welcome back to the Shigaki Podcast, where we explore the science behind how everyday foods and habits impact your health. I'm Dr. Mark, and today's episode tackles something almost all of us drink, coffee. Especially if you're over 60 and managing your kidneys, the question is, is it safe? That's a great question, Mark, and it's one I get all the time. Many of my older patients are either afraid to drink coffee or were told to cut back because of their kidneys. But here's the surprise. New research is turning this idea on its head. For years, coffee was lumped into the bad for kidneys list, often with no nuance. But today, we'll break down the science. What recent studies are showing, who should actually avoid coffee, and more importantly, how to drink it in a kidney-friendly way. Yes, and we're going to be very practical. We'll talk about the best types of coffee, the right time to drink it, what to avoid adding to your cup, and how genetics may even play a role in how your body processes caffeine. So if you're someone who's been nervous about your morning brew, or if you've stopped drinking it entirely because of fear, stay with us, because the truth might surprise you. And more importantly, it might even help protect your kidneys, if you do it right. So let's begin by clearing up one of the biggest myths. Does coffee actually damage your kidneys? That's where we're headed. But before we dive in, if you find these conversations helpful, please hit that subscribe button and share this podcast with a friend. Let's keep empowering people with real science. Before we begin, if you enjoy the content on the Shigiaki Podcast channel, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to receive the latest videos. Let's go straight to the myth that's been around for decades. Coffee is bad for your kidneys. Shigiaki, is there any truth to that? It's a myth rooted in fear, Mark, mostly from older studies that associated coffee with dehydration, which can stress the kidneys if someone is already at risk. But when you look at the latest science, the story is very different. Moderate coffee intake may actually have protective effects. That's surprising to many people, especially older adults who've been told for years to avoid coffee altogether. But the key word here is moderate, right? Exactly. In a large cohort study published in Kidney International Reports just last year, researchers found that people who drank one to two cups of coffee per day had a lower risk of chronic kidney disease progression compared to non-coffee drinkers. That's a huge reversal of old thinking. And I believe they also looked at something called EGFR, the estimated glomerular filtration rate, a marker for how well your kidneys are filtering. Coffee drinkers actually showed slower decline in kidney function over time. Correct. Caffeine has antioxidant properties and coffee itself contains hundreds of phytonutrients like chlorogenic acid, which help reduce inflammation, a key driver of kidney damage. So it's not the caffeine alone, it's the entire coffee matrix that matters. So when doctors used to say, stop coffee to protect your kidneys, they were oversimplifying it. Um, yes, we used to blame caffeine for everything from blood pressure spikes to dehydration. But newer evidence shows that in healthy individuals, a few cups a day is not only safe, it may be beneficial. Of course, we still need to be cautious in people with advanced kidney disease where potassium regulation and fluid balance are delicate. So to clarify, if someone has early stage kidney disease or wants to prevent it from happening as they age, moderate coffee consumption may actually help. That's what the evidence is suggesting especially if the coffee is black, without added sugars or creamers, and part of an overall anti-inflammatory lifestyle. We'll get into what not to add to your coffee soon, but this really changes the narrative. So much of health is about context. It's not coffee bad, but rather what kind of coffee, how much, and what else you're doing. We've heard so much conflicting advice about coffee and kidney health, but the recent studies are starting to paint a clearer picture. One of the most important findings comes from Kidney International Reports. In a large-scale cohort, researchers tracked over 14,000 adults across multiple years. Those who drank one to two cups of coffee per day consistently showed a lower risk of developing chronic kidney disease, about 15 to 23 percent less, compared to those who didn't drink at all. That's not a small number, and these weren't just random coffee habits. The study adjusted for major risk factors like blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, and age. So we're looking at a fairly reliable trend. And what's behind this effect is more than just caffeine. 
Coffee is loaded with polyphenols, especially chlorogenic acid. These natural compounds help fight inflammation and oxidative stress, which are two major causes of kidney damage as we age. There's also evidence that these compounds support vascular health. They help the blood vessels relax and expand, which improves circulation through the kidneys. That alone reduces the strain on filtration units like nephrons. Another strong paper from the American Journal of Kidney Diseases highlighted how regular coffee drinkers tend to have better glomerular filtration rates, a key indicator of kidney function. They also noticed a slower decline in kidney performance over time. And coffee offers more than antioxidants. There's magnesium, potassium, even natural compounds that help modulate insulin sensitivity and reduce uric acid buildup, both relevant to kidney health and caffeine itself in moderate doses supports metabolism and circulation, but when combined with polyphenols and minerals in coffee, the overall effect is protective, not harmful, as long as the coffee is clean and not overloaded with sugar or artificial creamers. So the idea that coffee damages the kidneys just doesn't hold up anymore, at least not in moderate quality controlled amounts. That's important for people who rely on coffee daily but worry about long-term effects. The key is understanding the whole food matrix of coffee. It's not just caffeine. It's the complex interaction of compounds that creates benefit, especially when used in the right context. While we've seen that moderate coffee can be helpful for kidney health in the general population, I think it's really important to emphasize not everyone should jump on the coffee bandwagon. There are certain groups who absolutely need to be cautious. That's right, Mark. Let's start with one of the most overlooked groups, people prone to oxalate kidney stones. Coffee, especially brewed coffee, contains moderate amounts of oxalates. If someone is already forming calcium oxalate stones, even small dietary sources like coffee can tip the balance. We're not saying coffee directly causes stones, but for someone with a history, especially if they're not hydrating enough or already eating high oxalate foods, it can become a trigger. The second group I want to highlight is people in stage 3 or 4 of chronic kidney disease, CKD. At this stage, the kidneys have already lost 50 to 70% of their function. Introducing caffeine can sometimes increase the filtration load temporarily, which may worsen kidney strain in sensitive individuals. And it's not just about filtration. There's also the issue of blood pressure. Coffee can raise systolic and diastolic pressure, especially in people who are caffeine sensitive. And for CKD patients, managing blood pressure is crucial to slowing disease progression. Yes, caffeine acts as a stimulant. It can cause blood vessels to constrict, increasing pressure inside the glomeruli. Over time, this can accelerate damage in compromised kidneys. That's why nephrologists often advise limiting caffeine to less than 200 milligrams per day for stage three and above. That's about one small cup of coffee. And for people with sensitivity to caffeine, even that can cause anxiety, rapid heart rate, or disrupt sleep, all of which indirectly affect kidney function by activating stress hormones like cortisol. We should also mention people who don't metabolize caffeine well due to genetic variations in the CYP1A2 enzyme. They tend to have a slower clearance rate, which means the caffeine lingers longer in their system potentially leading to prolonged blood pressure elevation or sleep disruption. So while coffee is not inherently harmful, personalization is everything. Just because one person thrives on it doesn't mean it's safe for everyone, especially for those with pre-existing kidney issues or even borderline function, coffee should be monitored carefully. My recommendation for these individuals, get your kidney function checked regularly, monitor your blood pressure, and start with a lower dose like half a cup of brewed coffee and see how your body responds and always choose plain unsweetened coffee not sugary or flavored versions that can cause other metabolic problems now let's talk about something that really matters not just whether you drink coffee but how you drink it because the truth is not all coffee is created equal i always tell my patients especially those with kidney concerns black coffee is the gold standard no sugar, no cream, and definitely no condensed milk. Just clean, fresh brewed black coffee. It might sound boring to some people, but what you're avoiding is far more important. Most of the trouble starts when people add syrup, whipped cream, flavored sweeteners, or those artificial creamers. 
These additives don't just spike blood sugar. They can increase inflammation and insulin resistance, which also burden your kidneys. And let's not forget, many of these sweetened coffees from chains are loaded with saturated fats and chemical emulsifiers. That puts stress on both your cardiovascular system and your renal system. The kidneys are very sensitive to blood pressure and blood sugar changes. So if you're over 60 or even just trying to protect your kidneys as you age, the best kind of coffee to choose is light roast Arabica. Why light roast? Because it actually contains more antioxidants than dark roast. It's gentler on the stomach, and those antioxidants like chlorogenic acid help fight inflammation, which supports kidney health. Arabica beans also tend to have lower caffeine content compared to Robusta, making them less likely to spike blood pressure. A smoother cup, better for your heart and kidneys. One often overlooked factor is the water used to brew coffee. In some areas, tap water contains high levels of sodium or phosphate additives, especially if you're using softened water. These minerals in excess can harm kidney function over time. It's a silent risk. If you're making coffee every morning, that's a daily exposure. So I always recommend using filtered water. Check your local water quality or use a countertop filter that removes heavy metals, sodium, and phosphate. So to sum up, keep your coffee simple, go black, choose Arabica, light roast, and use clean filtered water. It's not just about taste. It's about giving your kidneys a break and allowing them to function optimally. We've talked about the best type of coffee and how to brew it. Here's the big question. When should you actually drink it and how much is safe? Because timing really matters, especially for older adults. One of the biggest mistakes I see is people drinking coffee too late in the day. Caffeine has a half-life of about five to six hours, meaning if you drink a cup at 3 p.m., half of that caffeine is still circulating in your body by 9 p.m. That can interfere with deep sleep, which is essential for kidney repair and brain detoxification during the night. That's why I always recommend having your coffee before 2 p.m., ideally with your breakfast or mid-morning snack. And when it comes to quantity, one to two cups per day is more than enough, especially if you're over 60. You don't need a whole pot. And here's something even more important. Don't drink coffee on an empty stomach, especially in older age. Doing so can cause a rapid spike in cortisol, leading to jitteriness and increased blood pressure. For seniors, this can be dangerous. Pair your coffee with a high-fiber, high-protein breakfast, something like steel-cut oats with chia seeds or scrambled eggs with vegetables and avocado. The fiber and protein help stabilize blood sugar, reducing the cortisol response from caffeine. Plus, they support longer-lasting energy and better focus. And I've also seen that seniors who hydrate well in the morning, maybe with a glass of water before coffee, tend to handle caffeine much better. So let's wrap this up. We've covered a lot today, from the myths around coffee and kidney health to the actual science that challenges decades of fear. And what I love most is how empowering this information is. Instead of saying, don't drink coffee, we're now able to say, here's how to do it right for your kidneys, your heart, your energy, and your longevity. Yes, Mark. For so many older adults, the morning cup of coffee is more than just a habit. It's a ritual, a moment of calm. And for years, that simple joy was taken away because of outdated advice. But now we know, if you're drinking clean, black coffee in moderation, and you're mindful of your overall health, that ritual can actually be part of your healing, not your harm. I think the key message is this. Coffee is not the enemy. It's the way we use it, or abuse it, that determines the outcome. If you're loading your coffee with sugar, syrups, artificial creamers, or drinking six cups a day at random hours, of course, there may be risks. But if you're thoughtful, if you choose light roast Arabica brewed with clean water before 2 p.m. and paired with good food, it becomes a powerful tool, not just for focus or alertness, but also for kidney resilience. And let's remember, our kidneys are silent workers. They rarely complain until the damage is done. That's why prevention matters. Supporting them early with anti-inflammatory choices, hydration, balanced minerals, is always better than treatment later. And coffee, surprisingly, can be part of that preventive approach when used with care. You know, Dr. Hinahara, I think about how many people fear their habits because of misinformation. But what you've always taught through your own 100 plus years of living is that balance is the secret. Not extremes, not total avoidance, but listening to your body, 
respecting the science, and choosing wisely. That's the path to health after 60. Not just surviving, but thriving. And for those listening today, my message is this. Don't fear coffee, fear ignorance. Ask questions, stay curious. And when you learn something new, like we've shared today, don't be afraid to adjust. It's never too late. So if you've been avoiding coffee for years because of your kidneys, this is your invitation to revisit that belief. Talk to your doctor, of course, especially if you have advanced CKD or a history of stones. But for many of you, your morning brew may be safer and more beneficial than you think. Thank you, Dr. Hinohara. And thank you to everyone who stayed with us for this important conversation. If you found it helpful, please share this episode with someone you love, a parent, a neighbor, a friend who's been uncertain about their morning coffee. You might just change their life or their kidneys for the better.